Hi everybody. My name's Nige. I'm a Perl and Raku programmer based in Bath in the UK. And I love Perl and I love Raku. I've been programming in Perl for over 20 years and I use utilities written in Raku every day. And I want to share with you a response to this problem, which is we are competing in an increasingly crowded marketplace uh, for Mindshare. And yes, it's about brands. And uh, I gave a talk earlier in the day about branding. Um, and it's also about benchmarks, tech stacks. Uh, but it's also about the people. And that's what this talk is about. I want to talk about the profession of Perl and Raku programmers and, uh, and what we can do to differentiate ourselves in this market and how we can create a thriving profession within the community of Perl and Raku programmers. And I've taken some inspiration from a, an unusual place. And that is the profession of barristers, uh, legal profession. And for a short while, I practiced as a barrister before becoming a Perl programmer. And I think there's some useful things that we can borrow here from the barristers because they've been going for hundreds of years and their professions had to adapt with the times. But nonetheless, it continues to thrive after hundreds of years. And the computing profession, by contrast, is less than 100 years old. Uh, so what is it that we can use from the barristers that could help differentiate ourselves in that crowded marketplace, but also provide a thriving profession for the people that choose Perl and Raku as their main languages? Well, one of the problems I hear from employers is we can't find Perl programmers. And I think the barristers have got a solution to this already. And that is when you get admitted to the bar as a new barrister, one of the first things that happens is you get signed up to a public directory. And it's just a simple searchable database. And solicitors, members of the public, other barristers can use this directory to find you in your contact details. It also means the bar association can easily reach out to you if they need to send you a uh, a message or an update. And here, for example, here's this barrister's details. We can see his qualifications and the areas of practice that he likes to work in uh, and how long he's been at the bar for. And this is all really useful information for solicitors and other people deciding if they want to work with this barrister. So I think one of the first things we could do to improve the access to uh, Perl and Raku programmers, to improve the profession of Perl and Raku programmers, is to provide a simple database just like this. So that's the first professional hack I think we could use. Uh, the, the Perl Foundation could provide a simple directory, a searchable directory uh, of Perl and Raku programmers across all experience levels. And I sometimes wonder actually, when uh, employers are saying, well, we can't find Perl programmers, sometimes I wonder if what they really mean is we can't find inexpensive Perl programmers. And that's a completely legitimate request. And that's something which as a profession, we need to think about. How are we welcoming junior programmers into the profession? How are we welcoming them to be Perl and Raku programmers? And I think we can learn something from the barristers here as well. To become a barrister, you're sure you need to do a law degree first, but one of the main ways that they get you ready to practice as a barrister is through a professional uh, practice course, which is a condensed six week course. And it focuses on actually the job of being a barrister. And I learned more in the six week condensed course about actually how to do the job than I did in the four or five years at university, where it was all theory. 
So having that practical knowledge and having experienced barristers tell you the kind of the, the ins and outs of practicing on a day-to-day -day basis was very valuable and a really good introduction to the profession. And there's knowledge like that in Pearl and Raku. Uh, Pearl brew, Rakudu brew, uh, you know, just basic functions that would be important for all new Pearl and Raku programmers to be aware of. Uh, CPAN, um, where do I find modules for Raku, etc. So I think we can borrow an idea from the barristers here as well. And that is we could offer an introductory professional practice course for new Perl and Raku programmers. So that's the second hack that I think we could borrow. And that is the TPF sponsors a professional practice course for Perl and Raku that's delivered at conferences or online. And at the end of the course, the attendees can then sign up for that uh, professional directory so they're, there, they're then able to be found by recruiters and employers alike. And most importantly, they get to meet other people within the community and they get to feel part of the community. And I think that's one of the great benefits of uh, this introductory course. But to practice as a barrister, there's a few more steps you need to go through. And that's because the legal profession is aimed at achieving this lofty goal uh, of justice. And here we've got the Greek Titaness Themis. And in one hand, in her left hand there, she's weighing up the scales of justice, weighing up either side of the argument while being blindfolded. So her own prejudices and biases uh, she is not bringing to the decision. And then her right hand, which you may not be able to see, is a sword. So that finally, when she makes the decision, the sword is brought down on one side of the argument or the other. So the barrister's profession has this tricky uh, problem to solve, which is how do we actually achieve this effect of justice? Because as a barrister, you're just only one cog in the machinery of justice. And you rely on other people to do their job as well if a just result is going to come out at the end of it. So if you're a new, newly practicing barrister, uh, it's a problem because it's very likely that your first opponents that you come up against will be more senior than you. And so to try and even out the, the scales there, uh, the barristers have various things in place to try and make it as fair as possible. And even those silly wigs you see barristers wearing are, are part of that. They hide the fact, the age uh, of, of the two barristers so that the barristers appear equal in front of the court. Uh, they disguise their age, if you like. But they do it in other ways as well. So in the first two years, you get given a mentor and you can call this mentor if you get into any trouble. And I had to call my mentor on a number of occasions just to sanity check I was doing the right thing. And that was really useful and helpful. Um, and I didn't call him that often, but it was important to know that he was there. And that's the third hack that I think we could borrow. And that is, we could set up a mentoring program that the TPF sponsors, where uh, mentors are partnered up with mentees who have just finished that uh, introductory course. And mentors could uh, advertise their availability in the directory, uh, which means that mentees could find them as well. And this matching up process would welcome new programmers into the community and there'd be a sharing of knowledge which would then help sustain the, the profession of Pearl and Raku programmers in the long run. So that's the third professional hack that I think we could borrow. But it's still not enough to uh, practice at the bar. You've got your law degree, 
you've done the professional practice course, you've got your mentor appointed, who will help you if you get into a scrap in the first two years. Um, but the final thing you need to do is you need to swear an oath to the court um, that you will perform your duties to the best of your ability and you'll do it with uh, all the ethics and uh, other duties in mind. Uh, you have a duty to the court, but you also have a duty to your client, your opponent, uh, your witnesses. So the swearing of the oath is an important feature as well, because to achieve this quality of justice, all the cogs in the machinery of, of the law needs to sort of work towards the, the same goal. So I'm not suggesting that we all swear an oath to go and be good Perl and Raku programmers. Uh, but I think there's something here we could do. And we're seeing things like this already in the software development industry. Um, so for example, the Agile Manifesto has had thousands of signatories. And here's a group of programmers who are trying to deal with the fact that waterfly, sorry, waterfall uh, software development just wasn't really doing a good job of delivering quality software um, to clients. And so this manifesto was a way of dealing with that. And I think we could do something similar, but more specific, more specific to uh, Raku and Pearl. And this would be an important way for us as a professional body to actually say what we stand for. So here's the fourth hack that we have a manifesto for artistic software projects. And here's just a suggestion for some of the things that might be included in this manifesto. Um, I'm taking a bit of artistic license here, so you know, bear with me, but um, it's just a way of illustrating what we could do here. So for example, part of our manifesto could say, uh, we strive to build software that's fit for purpose. We strive to build software that um, the community around the software is supportive, friendly, and helpful. And we strive to build authentic brands. And if you saw my um, branding talk, you'll know what I mean by that. Uh, it effectively just means so that what we say on the tin is what it does. It's about having an honest brand. And then finally, we strive to build software that produces flow for programmers and users. So let me just explain what I mean by this. Software that produces flow. Um, I'd like to first start by saying what flow isn't. And we've all probably had this experience. Um, I was working as a, a Perl contractor and I picked up a, a Bugzilla ticket and it was four pages long and it had been open for over four years. It had hundreds of comments on it. So on one hand, I thought, uh oh, this is trouble. <laughs> but then on the other hand, I looked at it, and it seems that it was just the simple addition of an extra column to a report. So I wondered what, what could be so hard about it. Um, anyway, as I delved into the code, I soon found out what the problem was. And deep, buried within a sub-template within a sub-template. I found this steaming pile of pearl. <laughs> and it really was steaming. It was dense and full of sigils, full of regex, and hardly any white space. It was just a solid block of pearl. And I've been programming pearl for many, many years by this time. But this completely stopped me in my tracks. It was uh, an absolute flow stopper. And it wasn't just stopping me, it had stopped all the people that had tried to dealt with that ticket before in the past. And it was also stopping the business making progress. And this is a problem because it's things like this that in the end get Perl uh, replaced by another technology uh, because management are, are sick of it or whatever. And so I think it's really important for us to make sure that we avoid flow stoppers wherever possible. Because Raku and Perl have fantastic flexibility, fantastic uh, expressibility, uh, but that comes at a, potentially at a price. 
which is if it causes other people to be fearful of our code or stop them in their flow, then this is a problem. Because it's one thing to write code, of course the code's got to run well on the hardware, uh, but it really needs to run well on the wetware. The cost of software is here on the left-hand side and Moore's law is helping the right-hand side, but unfortunately the left-hand side where, you know, uh, until Elon Musk gets his brain augmentation stuff working, we're still stuck. So what can we do? Well, I think we need to help each other. We're stuck with our caveman brains. We need to help ourselves so that we can read our code the next, the next week. And we need to help our team, anyone who comes along to then deal with that code. So as a quality of software, I think this is really important for us to preserve and look after. That we should be going for this idea of generating flow. So what do I mean by flow? Well, you've probably all felt it at some time in your life. And kids easily fall into flow. If you ever see a, a child playing, you often see them in, in a state of uh, intense flow. Uh, but sometimes you, you feel it if you're playing a computer game and you wonder where all the hours have gone because you're just in that kind of place where you're, you're making progress and you're enjoying what you're doing. So it's a very productive state. So it's an ideal state to be in as a computer programmer. Um, but it's also a great state if you happen to be a user. So if you're a user with only limited ability uh, and if you're using software that nonetheless helps you get things done, then it can also get you into a state of flow. So this is a useful quality, not just for us as programmers, but also to offer this quality to our users. And businesses like it because they want to see programmers being productive and making progress. They don't want to see tickets that have taken four years to resolve and hundreds of comments. They want people to be able to get things done. So I think this is an interesting thing as a group that we could be going for. Just like the barristers as a group in the end are trying to achieve justice. They're trying to set up a system which the emergent property of it is a just result. Um, I think what we could do as Perl and Raku programmers is think about the emergent quality of the software that we write, not just for ourselves, but for each other and for the businesses and organizations that we make software for. So that's why I've included that as part of the manifesto because it's a quality that we would need to strive towards. But it's something that if we could put our hands up and say, look, this is what we're trying to do, would make us very interesting uh, to the market uh, of brands and uh, computer languages out there. So to, uh, to wrap things up now, the top four hacks that I think we should borrow from barristers are, we should come up with a searchable directory for Perl and Raku programmers, so people can find us. I think we should have a professional practice course that welcomes new Perl and Raku programmers into the community and gets them into a state of flow as soon as possible so that they can get things done and make progress. We could offer mentoring and we should sign on the bottom line. Uh, we should put our hands up to say what we stand for and an artistic project manifesto would be one way that we could do that. And if we could do that, then we would have a strong growing community in this competitive marketplace. We also have something kind of unique and interesting to say, just as a group of people, quite apart from our brand stack or our tech stack, there's, there's something about our people that is also important and goes with the brand. And if we can do that, I think Pearl, Raku, uh, will all flourish. We'll be able to build an ecosystem of brands and languages and uh, the people around that support those things uh, will grow as well. Thanks for listening.